Hello students, my name is Dr. Gajendra Purohit and you are watching our YouTube channel. Today, I am here to discuss about another concept related to infinite series, that is alternating series. If the term that we have is not positive inside an infinite series, then the type of series that we end up obtaining will appear in the following manner. Such a series is called an alternating series. Here the term alternating means presence of plus and minus, so we call it an alternating series. We represent this series in this way, n equals 1 to infinity minus 1 power n minus 1 un, denoting the terms of the series. Let's take an example. Suppose we have a series given to us. As we have this summation, n is equal to 1 to infinity minus 1 to the power n minus 1 and 1 upon n. Now let's evaluate it. So when we will put n equals to 1, then we will get 1 as its value. If we put 2 here, then we will get minus 1 by 2, then plus 1 by 3 and minus 1 by 4 and so on. So here we get an alternating series. Suppose we take this series, so for n equals to 1, 2, 3, we get this. And for a series like log n divided by n square, where n ranges from 1, 2, 3 and so on, so this will also be an alternating series. So how will we know if it is an alternating series? So if here we have the summation, including a term like minus 1 raised to the power n, n minus 1 or n plus 1, then this is known as an alternating series, right? Now regarding the convergence of this type of series, what specific conditions need to be satisfied for this type of series to converge? Alternatively, under what conditions does this series diverge? I will explain this to you. So let's get started. Let's discuss alternating series. This is characterized by this type of series which we have already discussed. I have provided you with three examples of this. Now we need to find out under what condition this will converge. So listen, here we have a test. This test is known as the Labneys test. If we have any alternating series of this type and if we discuss its convergence, then in that case, the Labneys test should be, it should be fulfilled. So if the conditions of the Leibniz test are satisfied, then the alternating infinite series will be considered as convergent. I will explain with the help of an example. Let's say we have an alternating series minus 1 power n, minus 1, 1 upon n, where n is equal to 1 to infinity. Let's consider this. Here we have this infinite series given, which is an alternating series. We have to find out if this series is convergent or not. So for this, we need to consider three things here. So this term which we have here is called un. And in this case, the un is defined as 1 divided by n, right? That is what un is, okay? the coefficient of the term minus 1 power n minus 1 is this un, right? Therefore, this un must be 0 or greater than 0. Secondly, this un should be decreasing, right? It needs to be decreasing. So, obviously, we observe that it is indeed decreasing. The third condition is that the limit of un n tends to infinity should be 0. If we notice the limit of un n tends to infinity, let's see what happens to the value of un as n tends to infinity. You will notice that in this case, the value of 1 upon n is 0. This indicates that the series is a convergent alternating series by the Labneys test. In an exam, you get a question that state and prove Labneys theorem for alternating series or for the convergence of alternating series. So you should know its proof. Before we understand it, there are some concepts that I would like to recall for you. I have explained to you all of this in detail in my videos. If you have not seen them, then you can watch them through iTab. The first thing we have is that any series, if it is convergent, then when will it converge? If it's SOPS converge, what does SOPS mean? It is the sequence of partial sums, right? If the sequence of partial sums converges, then the series itself will also be convergent. The second point we have here is that two complementary sequences are convergent to the same limit. If we have two complementary subsequences of the series that both converge to the same limit, then the series itself would also be convergent. We covered this concept in the study of sequence. If you haven't reviewed the videos on sequences, watch them through the iTab. The third one we have is that monotonically increasing sequences are convergent if and only if they are bounded above. If we have a sequence that is continually increasing, but if it is not bounded above, then the sequence will not converge. Instead, it will diverge and will go to infinity. Therefore, it must be bounded in the above. So, if we have an increasing sequence and it is bounded above, it will converge, which means it will stop at some point for sure. Right? So this means that these three points will be essential and will be used in the proof. So let's move forward. So students, we will now see the proof of Labneys theorem. If we have any infinite alternating series, then we take its SOPS like S1. What will be S1 in this case? If you notice, the S1 of this here will be U1, remember? And S2 will be U1 minus U2. We will keep going like this, right? So in the similar way, we will have Sn here. Sn will be U1 minus U2 plus U3. 
this will continue in this way and it will be minus 1 power n minus 1 u n this is what our inner term is. So, remember at n tends to infinity we find its value. What is the value when n approaches infinity? If it is finite then what is it called? We learn this in SOPS. Okay, let us check if there is any series convergent or not. So, at this time what do we have? It is the Sn term. Now, here is what we have S1, S2, S3, S4, Sn. We have a SOPS. Within this sequence, we extract the even terms and form a separate sequence from them. We denote the sequence of even terms as S2n and we take the odd terms such as S1, S3, S5, so on and form a separate sequence from these, right? What I mean here is for the SOPS that we have, we have separated it into two complementary sequences. We have this different subsequence here and this different subsequence here. Now, what will we do? We will proceed to see if these two series are converging on the same limit or not. If both of these complementary series converge at the same limit, then this Sn that we have will also become convergent. If this is convergent, then this will also be convergent. We know that if the sequence is convergent, then the series itself will also be convergent. So, what we need to do with these two sequences is, we will check at what limit they are converging. So, let us discuss S2n. In S2n, what terms will we have? We will get terms like u1 minus u2 and so on, a series like that. If we consider S2n plus 2, what will we get? We will get a series of the form u1 minus u2 and so on, right? Now, we will find the difference between these. I find the difference between these two. So, when I find the difference between these two, you will see that the terms get cancelled. This u2 gets cancelled by u2 and u1 gets cancelled by u1. So, after all, we will be left with the last term and the last term will be this, right? I mean the last term remaining will be what? It will be the term that remains. So, we know that according to the Leibniz theorem, it states that suppose we have any u n that is 0 or greater than 0 and if it is decreasing and at the limit as n tends to infinite, the u n goes to 0, then the series will indeed be considered as convergent. So, we need to assume these three things and then we need to prove that this series is convergent or not. So, we will assume three things. From these assumptions, we derive this result and we are assuming that this series is decreasing, right? Since the series is decreasing, the difference that we calculate will be positive, right? This is because it is a decreasing series. Obviously, this will be greater than this one. So, the difference will be positive. If the difference is positive, it means that this term is greater and this term is smaller than the previous term. This means this series, this sequence that is being formed, it is monotonically increasing, right? Students, you understand? The bigger term minus the smaller term results in a positive difference. It means the sequence is monotonically increasing. I had told you the third point when I recalled the points, I had explained the third point and it was if we have any sequence monotonically increasing and if it is bounded above, then the sequence that is generated is convergent. Now, we will see S2n. We will see if it is bounded above or not. Students, if this series is bounded above, then it will approach a specific value that will converge at some limit. Similarly, we will also show S2n plus 1 here because since it is increasing, so this will also be increasing only, right? If it is increasing and it is bounded above as well, it will converge. If this also converges and this also converges and if both are converging to the same limit, then the SOPS we get will be convergent. That is what we have to prove. Well, we are discussing this. It is increasing. Now, we need to prove that if this is bounded above or not. This S2n that we have will be like this, right? So, this will be here and it will continue in this way. That will be the term here. Now, we have to prove whether it is bounded above or not. So, this S2n can be written in this manner here like u1. Then u2 minus u3, u4 and so on. We can write it this way. Here, what I did, I wrote u1. And so, it is u2 minus u3 plus u4 minus u5 and we are proceeding further by assuming when we have the statement of the Leibniz test where the series that we have of u1, u2 is decreasing and if it is decreasing, then the difference will be positive. Its difference will also be positive. The difference of all will contain some sort of value and whatever value we get as negative from u1, it means that some value will be left here. So, what will we get in this case? S2n will be either smaller or equal to this u1. So, here we have proven that this S2n sequence that we have is monotonically increasing sequence. It is also bounded above because we are not getting any value greater than u1 from it. All the values we got are smaller than u1. So, it is bounded above. And if this is bounded above, then what happens to this S2n sequence? It will be convergent. And if the sequence is convergent, let's suppose that it is converging on L. Let's assume that this sequence is converging on L. Now, we have to prove that the sequence S2n plus 1 which is a complementary subsequence, is also converging to the same limit L. So, what do we do next? Listen, we take S2n plus 1. Consider what we have with S2n plus 1. The terms will alternate, so they will be negative, right? So, this is the term that will be present here, right? This is the term we get. Understood? 
Now we know that this entire sequence is equal to S2n here. So we will put S2n in place of this. And this will be U2n plus 1. Now what we do is we put its limit on both sides because we have to check its limit. If its limit is also L, then we can continue. Now limit n tends to infinity S2n plus 1. Limit n tends to infinity S2n and we apply its limit. And we are applying the Labneys test, which assumes that un is decreasing and that its limit n tends to infinity is 0. So un is approaching 0, right? If un goes to 0, then u2n plus 1 will also go to 0 as n tends to infinite. So this is 0 anyway, as we assumed. We have calculated the limit of s2n as l and this is also l. So students, this one also goes to l and this one also goes to l. So its two subsequences are converging on l. This means that the SOPS that we have, it will also converge on l. If it converges to L, then this series that we have will become what? It will become convergent. Leibniz theorem can be proved in this way in the exams. Its proof is asked a lot in exams, right? Now I will try to explain some questions on this. We have a question given here. For n equals 1 to infinity, minus 1 power n minus 1, 1 upon n square proof. That this alternating series that we have here converges or not. So we have three conditions for that. Now students, what are we getting for this un here? We are getting 1 upon n square for un. 1 upon n square should be greater than 0 or equal to 0. Indeed, it is. Second, it should be decreasing. As you put the value of n, the function decreases. The third one we have is at n tends to infinity. What should be the value? It should be 0. All three conditions are satisfied, meaning this series that we have will be considered as convergent. So, in this way, we can easily prove it. The question is, we are asked to test the convergence of this series. So, we have the summation n is equal to 2 to infinity minus 1 power n minus 1 n square upon n plus 1 factorial. So, students, let's refer this un. So, the un term that we are discussing here is n square divided by n plus 1 factorial. As evident, it is 0 and greater than 0. Now, we need to see if it is decreasing. And third point is to see if at limit n tends to infinity, it goes to 0. And proceeding further, as it is a positive, if we can prove that at limit n tends to infinity, this will go to 0, then it will definitely be decreasing. If we have a series of positive terms and it converges to 0 as n tends to infinity, then obviously it's a decreasing sequence, right? We will prove at the limit n tends to infinity if it goes to 0 or not. Even if you have doubt in your mind, then you can check here that limit. n tends to infinity un plus 1 upon un. If it's less than 1, then it's definitely decreasing. And on n tends to infinity, it will go to 0. Because we know that what test this is. It is the Delembert ratio test, right? If it is the Delembert ratio test and the value is less than 1, then the series is always convergent. If it is convergent, then it must satisfy the necessary conditions. So you can also do that, right? Moving forward, we take the limit as n tends to infinity. Here we take un. So what will I do? I will take the limit as n tends to infinity. What do I do next? I open it up. This will be n plus 1, then n, then n minus 1, and n minus 2. And it will continue till 1. If I take the common factor, look, this n cancels this one. Then I can take n common from here, then from here and here. So there will be many n. We will get n to the power n. If we cancel 1n from n power n, we get n power n minus 1 here. And as n tends to infinity, it will be 0. So this condition will be satisfied. Meaning this series that we have will become convergent. Let's move ahead. The question is, prove here that log 2 upon 2 square minus log 3 upon 3 square plus log 4 upon 4 square. We have an infinite alternating series like this. You have to prove that this is convergent. So let's see how we proceed. We will write its nth term. So n is equal to 2 to infinity we will get log n upon n square and minus 1 power n. So students, this is an alternating series where the un is this. Students, the un we have is log n upon n square. And we know that this is already 0 and bigger than 0 and this is decreasing as well. Because we know that un equals log n upon n square, which is 0 and greater than 0. And it is decreasing because the denominator is n square. So it will decrease. And if it decreases, then we will discuss about the limit n tends to infinity, right? So the value we obtain from un is this limit n tends to infinity log n upon n square and the value of this term will be if you notice it is infinite upon infinite if you also apply dl hospital then this log will be upon n and its differentiation is 2n 1 upon 2n square at n tends to infinity this will be 0. So this means that this series that we have will be convergent because the three conditions we have here are satisfied according to Leibniz theorem. So the next question says that summation n is equal to 1 to infinity minus 1 power n minus 1 n plus 1 upon n. We are asked to determine if this series will converge or not. Students, see the un that we are getting here. It is n plus 1 upon n. 
you need to examine if this is decreasing. Plus, next you need to see that when n tends to infinity, whether this goes to 0 or not. The next condition we have will be this limit, n tends to infinity. You have to check the value of u n. So, here it should go to 0. And as you can see that it will not go to 0, right? And the value that we get here would be 1, right? So, it is not satisfying this particular condition. So, by the Labney's theorem, this given alternating series will not converge. Whether it's decreasing or anything else, it has to satisfy this condition. It's essential, right? So, you need to understand that. So, this question is for the comment box. How many seconds it took you to solve it? Please be sure to comment. For more such videos, check out the 2.0 series of Infinite Series. If you are preparing for CSIR, NetGate and IIT JAM exams and want to improve your preparation, then this series can be found here and you can subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much. Bye.